So we were talking about dynamic optimization method and the goal for today's class is to derive the back propagation algorithm. Okay, and we'll then discuss a little bit about maximum principle after we derive the back propagation algorithm. So the, qu the question is, I want to minimize j of u0 to ut minus one, which is given by, well, let me just have a terminal cost for the time being, x capital T, and the system equation is xt plus one equals to ft xt ut. Okay, so right now I'm doing it only for the terminal cost problem. And then we will move on to the running cost problem as well. Okay, so the way to run gradient descent, so let me define u vector as a vector of u0 to ut minus one. And the way to run the usual gradient descent algorithm is to Okay, so the way to run gradient descent algorithm is to initialize with some u0 and then define uk equals, uk plus one equals to uk minus alpha k gradient of j uk. Okay, this is the gradient descent algorithm. And the back propagation algorithm is a gradient descent algorithm for this problem for this problem. Because this problem has a very specific structure, we can exploit the structure to come up with a algorithm for the usual gradient descent and that algorithm is known as the back propagation algorithm. So let's try to uh, derive that algorithm. So in order to compute the gradient of JUK, all we need to do is compute this. So what is the gradient expression Okay, so the gradient of J is basically the gradient of J with respect to the individual actions that you need to take over time zero to T minus one. Okay. So let's try and compute what this derivative looks like. So I want to uh, state a very small result. The chain rules. We had covered chain rule in the beginning of this class, but let me recall what chain rule is. So you have F from Rn to Rm, G from rm to r then the chain rule is gradient of x g composition f x uh, yeah this is gradient of f at x times gradient with respect to y of g evaluated at fx. Okay. 
Okay, so this is going to be a matrix of this size. This is going to be a vector of size Rm. And this is going to be a vector in Rm. Okay, I hope all of you remember this chain rule. Um, it just extends the usual chain rule for differentiation that you may have studied in your calculus class to the vector valued functions. Any questions so far? Perfect. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to compute the gradient of ut minus one of j of the vector. So this is the same as gradient of ut minus one ct of Pt of the vector u. But I can rewrite this Pt in the usual way. Ft minus 1, xt minus 1, ut minus 1. Okay, so I have to find the gradient of this composition of two functions. Okay, so how should I, how should I compute this? I can apply the chain rule. So what kind of gradients am I going to get? So remember that xt minus one is independent of, so this term is independent of ut minus one. Okay, because it depends on, so it de so xt minus one depends on uh, u zero to ut minus two. So it doesn't depend on ut minus one. So I don't need to worry about the dependence of ut minus one to xt minus one because it doesn't depend on it. So it, the only way place where ut minus one appears is here. Okay, so with this, what do you think is the derivative of this composition of the cost function with the state transition function? What is this equal to? Okay, let me just uh, pull up the chain rule here. So chain rule of G composition F is the gradient of F multiplied by the gradient of G. So I have CT composition FT minus one here. So what would the gradient be? Gradient FT minus one um, times the gradient of ct yeah with evaluated at ft minus one right right devaluated at x capital t so because x capital t stands for ft minus one of xt minus one ut minus one so that's right so that's the gradient so i differentiate the state transition function with respect to ut minus one and then I multiply it by the multiply it to the derivative of the cost function with respect to the terminal state. Okay. Now let's try to do it for gradient of ut minus two of j. Okay, so we'll just apply the same idea there. So I have gradient of ut minus two j is 
CT of FT minus one of FT minus two of XT minus two UT minus one. Okay, so now I am getting a far more complicated function. So I have uh, the u so x t minus two is independent of u t minus two. U t minus one is of course independent of u t minus two. So <clears throat> the only way u t minus two affects this entire function is through the influence of f t minus two and the state of x t minus one, which uh, f t minus one is a function of. This is x t minus one. Yeah, go ahead. So there is a gradient before the first function. Sorry. The gray. Oh yeah, there is. Yes, that's right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, there should be a gradient here. U t minus two. Thanks. Okay, so what should the gradient of this be? So usually when you are taking the gradient of multivariate function, uh, the last function would appear first and then the second last function and then of course the first function will appear. So I know it may be a bit difficult to apply the uh, chain rule here, but actually it is applicable. And the expression for this would be Okay, so this ft minus two comes here and you are, here you are taking the gradient directly with respect to ut minus two because xt minus two is independent of ut minus two. So you're taking gradient with respect to ut minus two, then ft minus one appears here. And because ut minus two affects xt minus one, you have to take the gradient with respect to xt minus one of this state transition function at time t minus one. And then of course the this x t minus one affects x t x capital T, so therefore you have to take the gradient of c t with respect to x capital T. And now you will see that there is a pattern which is emerging. Okay, so this is the gradient of u t minus one of j, and this is the gradient of u t minus two of j. So what's what kind of pattern do you see emerging in this in this sort of expression? So this is the derivative at time t minus one. This is the derivative at time t minus two. What's the pattern that you see in these expressions? Just keep adding another derivative term in the front in terms of the previous um, u t minus uh, whatever number. Right. Okay. So the final so, so the final thing is always the last vector is always the gradient of c t. The first vector is always the gradient of u t with respect to f t. Okay. And then in the middle, you have to have the dependence of the state. Uh, you have to capture the dependence of the state transition function with respect to the state. So that's what is captured in the middle. Okay, so this gives me the approach to calculate gradient of ut of j, which would be given by gradient of ut of ft times gradient of xt plus one, ft plus one, F T minus one. 
okay this is this is the expression for the gradient that you are going to get at time t okay that's the pattern that we are seeing in the first two equations and in fact this this is actually correct because uh, you can prove this by induction Now you will notice that in this expression, there appears to be a recursive equation which is embedded in it. Okay, so the gradient of, so let's look at this particular expression. So this is gradient of ut of ft, but then you have the gradient with respect to the state of the state transition function. And then the final gradient is the gradient of cost, the terminal cost. We only have a terminal cost. We don't have a running cost here. Right, so I can call this a vector pt plus one. Um, I can rename this, and this is called the co-state vector. Okay. So what's the update equation for co-state vector? So what is pt equals to? So PT is gradient of XT FT times PT plus one. Okay, that's the recursive equation for updating the co-state vector. And as you can see, this vector is defined in a backward fashion. So PT is defined in a backward fashion. So you need to know the value of PT plus one in order to compute PT. More importantly, P capital T would be the gradient of CT. That's how you initialize the co-state vector. So the co-state vector is running backwards. It's not running forward in time. Okay, so you start with the terminal time, you define the co-state vector as the derivative of the cost function, and then you define recursively, or rather backward recursively, you define the co-state vector at time t as some matrix multiplied by the co-state vector at time t plus one. Okay, I'm going to pause here for questions. Okay, so let's recap what we have done so far. So we started with the simplest problem of having just a terminal cost and we wanted to compute the gradient of J uh, with respect to U. And in order to do the computation, we looked at the gradient of J with respect to UT minus one. We looked at the gradient of J with respect to UT minus two. And we found that these gradients have a pattern uh, because of the nature of this dynamic optimization problem. So, Based on that pattern, we identified that the gradient of J with respect to UT is basically a product of a sequence of matrices multiplied by a vector, which is uh, the gradient of the terminal cost with respect to the state. What we did was we renamed the tail of this product as a co-state vector. Okay, so it's a vector and it's basically product of matrices times a vector. Now, co-state vector can actually be defined recursively where we define the co-state vector at the terminal time as the gradient of the cost. And then the co-state vector at time t would be a matrix multiplied by the co-state vector at the next time step. Okay, so that's what we have done so far. What else can we, um, can we define on the basis of this definition? Can I ask a quick question? Yes, of course. Uh, so I'm I'm trying to think of this because I've heard of the backpropagation algorithm mostly in terms of neural networks. Right. Um, so the way we're doing it right now, can we kind of think about it as we're passing it back uh, through multiple layers? So like at yes. each time step, that's like a new layer that we're passing back through. That's right. That's exactly okay. the, that. That's exactly how backpropagation algorithm for neural network is defined. 
Okay. So, so the backpropagation algorithm for neural network is, is exactly the algorithm that we are currently covering where UT is the weight matrices of the network and FT is the ReLU function or whatever, you know, tan hyperbolic function, whatever is the activation function of the perceptron in your neural network. So, and the CT would be the training cost, you know, the loss function that you are trying to minimize in the neural network. In fact, in your assignment, there is a question about uh, deriving the backpropagation algorithm for neural network based on the maximum principle that we are going to be talking about today. Okay. So you will get to work on it in your assignment. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Any other question? Okay. So now I can also define gradient of J in terms of the co-state vector. And that would be gradient of UT of FT times PT plus one. So this is also a matrix and this is the uh, co-state vector at time T plus one. Okay. So just by introducing a new variable called co-state vector, we are able to write down the expression for gradient of ut in a very very simplified fashion okay so this is called i mean this basically would um so now I want to talk about the back propagation algorithm. Let me just write down uh, a simple thing. This is known as the adjoint equation. Uh, uh, and, and so this is the, the backward recursive equation is known as the adjoint equation. And of course you have the forward, the usual state transition equation, which is XT plus one equals to FT of XT comma UT. Okay, so that, that tells you uh, that gradient of UT. So, so how would you run the backpropagation algorithm? So let's say you start from So I start from so I so x naught is given to me. The initial state is given to me. Um, I come up with uh, at time k. No, I shouldn't use time at step k. I have u0. Let me put a superscript k. Well, uh, maybe not. Okay u1k to ut minus 1k. So I initialized it randomly, like I can pick whatever actions I want. So u0k, u1k all the way to ut minus 1k. Based on this sequence of actions, I am going to compute xtk by or xt plus 1k by ft xtk utk okay and this is known as the forward propagation so i have a sequence of actions which i you know at time k equals to 0 or at step k equals to 0 i can in initialize it randomly um, and then based on the sequence of action I am going to do a forward propagation using the state transition function and I can compute the trajectory at time k, uh, at step k. Okay, so this gives me the trajectory. Now, uh, based on this uh, trajectory of state, I'm going to use the backward propagation Uh, prop 
propagation using a joint equation. So I define my PTK equals to, sorry, P capital TK equals to gradient of XT, CT, XTK. And then PT K equals to gradient of X. T. Okay, so I start with a given initial condition at time k, I have some sequence of actions. Based on that sequence of actions, I applied the state transition function, or in other words, I forward propagated those sequence of actions to compute the trajectory of the state under the influence of those actions. Then I use a joint equation to do a backward propagation. So I started with the terminal time, the derivative of the cost at the terminal time, stored it in the variable PTK, the co-state variable PTK, and then I backward propagated the, uh, the, the co-state vector in order to compute the co-state vector all the way up to time t equals to zero. Then the third step is to compute the gradient UK. So u vector k is the sequence of the states, sequence of the actions at time at step k of the algorithm, which is merely uh, gradient of u, ut of ft, x, tk, utk times pt plus one. And then the usual gradient descent step. Okay, this is the famous back propagation algorithm. Step one, two, and three. Uh, this is k plus one, and then after k plus one, you go back to the um, step one and, and go over all this sequence of steps again. Okay, I'm sorry, the equation looks pretty ugly but actually implementation is fairly straightforward. I'm gonna pause here for questions. Kind of related to um, just these these problems in general, are these very dependent on you being able to model the state uh, changing equation? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And in fact, there is a whole field called system identification, which uses data and hypothesis tests and, you know, all the modeling stuff you've studied in physics to determine what the state transition function is. Okay. 
Yeah. Because like in the feedback network, um, then you don't need to model the system as well, right? Because you're getting um, the feedback back so then you can make oh, the changes. Right? Yeah, yeah. So you are basically talking about the robustness properties of uh, the DP equation. Um, to, so to, to answer your question, you always need a good model, but to what accuracy or, I mean, your, your model could be quite inaccurate, in which case the dynamic, the feedback policies would be far better than the open loop policies. Far, far mm -hmm. better because of the robustness properties that are inherited when you apply dynamic programming algorithm. So you are, okay. you are absolutely right. But the, the issue is uh, for most systems, you don't, you cannot come up with an accurate model. So you kind of uh, come up with some simpler models and you use dynamic programming on those simpler models to compute the feedback policy. And you implement that feedback policy on the original complicated system. And you know, the world has advanced so much today based on purely this simple idea that you can do this translation without necessarily worrying about robustness because dynamic programming or feedback policies are inherently robust. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We'll talk about it on uh, Friday uh, when we talk about time consistency of optimal solution. So there's a lot of cool stuff that happens when you start discussing time consistency of optimal solutions and, and all of these properties will be discussed on Friday. Great question. Any other question? Okay, so this is, uh, so this algorithm, of course, uh, as one of your friends rightly pointed out, this algorithm is used for training neural networks. Uh, so it's highly used in machine learning. Well, let me just write neural networks. This is also used in MPC, model predictive control in vehicles. So a lot of control systems that are being used, a, a lot of algorithms that are being used in your vehicle engine essentially are running some sort of algorithm of this type, some sort of back propagation algorithm for a specific system. So it could be uh, how much fuel to inject in the engine. It could be how much, uh, uh, you know, at what time you sh the spark plug, sh uh, the spark should happen in the engine. Uh, it could be about controlling the noise and vibrations in the engine and so on. So all of those, many of those algorithms are, are using this sort of back propagation algorithm to compute what the optimal sequence of action should be. And then those sequence of actions are executed by the engine. Uh, over time. So, uh, so a lot of vehicles are using is it, it uh, then generators, which power our uh, entire nation, uh, you know, through electricity generation, they're also using some sort of uh, back propagation algorithm to, uh, to improve the overall efficiency of the engine. Okay, and as uh, your friend again pointed out, you really need to know your FT in order for this back propagation algorithm to learn. So typically, you know what the cost function is. You basically want to uh, minimize some sort of error between what is desired and what you currently have. So the cost function is pretty straightforward, but the description of the state space, the description of the action space, and the state transition function, those are the things that you really have to spend a lot of time thinking about, particularly if the system is new. If the system is old, not a problem. People have already figured it out over the past 100 or 200 years. But if the system is new, then you really have to spend a lot of time figuring out um, what the state should be, what the action should be, and what's the state transition function in order to apply this back propagation algorithm. Okay, so the algorithm in front of you is truly revolutionary as far as the control system goes. Um, okay, so 
So that tells me, so this is the usual backpropagation algorithm. We have done it. We have defined this algorithm for the situation when you only have a terminal cost and you don't have a running cost. So now the goal is to extend this algorithm to a situation when you have a running cost in the system. Okay, so the goal now is I want to minimize with respect to you summation of C T X T U T plus C capital T X capital T. Okay, again, I have the usual constraint X T plus one equals to F T of X T comma U T. Okay, so this is what I want to minimize, but what I have right now is uh, how to deal with the situation when you have a terminal cost. So one way to transform the this problem into a problem with the terminal cost is as follows. I'm going to add additional state yt plus one equals to yt plus ct xt ut. Okay, and y zero is equal to zero. So I start with a zero state. So this is an augmented state, a new state that I have added, which I initialize with zero. And at every point of time, I'm just going to add to the existing state, I'm going to add the current cost that is accrued by the system. And then I have this new formulation where I have a some ft of xt yt and then ut which is This is a very usual trick in control systems, which is to augment the state with the performance, uh, with, with the cost function. So that's what we have done. And then what is my J of U? What is this equal to? So of course I have CT of XT, and then I have summation of all the cost. What can I replace it by? So remember that this new state that we have added yt, it is accruing all the cost that has been spent, that has been accrued so far. So what should I add to the cost function for this new system? So if I just add yt, then I recover this problem. These two problems are equivalent. They have the same performance index and they have the um, the cost, the state transition function is also preserved in some sense. Okay, any question on this equivalence? Okay, no questions. All right. So 
we need a few things in order to compute the gradient of j with respect to ut okay so what all things do we need so we need uh, gradient of uh, i need to give this a name what should i let me call this x tilde t plus 1 okay so i'm going to define it as x tilde t plus 1 so I need x tilde t f t. I need u t f t. And what else? I need gradient of x t of t tilde t. gradient of x tilde rt, c tilde rt. Okay, see, these are the three derivatives I need to compute uh, so that I can come up with a back propagation algorithm for this type of system or this type of performance index. So let's compute the gradient of ft with respect to the state. So this would be gradient of xt ft gradient of yt ft gradient of xt gradient of yt okay remember this is my this is the expression for ft so I'm just taking the gradient with respect to ft in the first column and the gradient of yt plus ct in the second column. What do I get? Okay, any questions? Is this is this clear? How we came up with this derivative? Okay, now let's do the same thing. I want gradient of What do I get? The first term remains the same. The second term is just the gradient of the cost function. And then the third Okay, so I have all these three gradients right in front of you.
Any questions so far? Okay, let's recap what we have done. So we started with a cost function which has a running cost component to it. Uh, we augmented the new state, we added a new state to the system and we came up with a new uh, optimization formulation where there is only a terminal cost and but you have a new state transition function based on this augmented state. And then in order to compute the gradient of J with respect to U, you need to compute these three quantities and the, these three de derivatives and we have been able to compute that. So now we can uh, we can come up with the uh, the gradient. So so we need to come up with gradient of u t of j, which is equal to f t times p tilde t plus one. And your p tilde t plus one or p tilde t is equal to gradient of x tilde t f t times p tilde t plus one. And your p tilde capital T is Okay, so after you run all this recursion, what you get is well, uh, let me just do it. Okay, so everyone understands everything we have done so far. So these are the recursive equations we need to compute. So starting from so p tilde t is actually this gradient of, so this is gradient of xt ct one, then my p tilde t minus one equals to Okay, so that's the expression for p tilde t minus one, which is equal to gradient of x t minus one, f t minus one, gradient of x t c t plus gradient of x t minus one c t minus one, and then one. Okay, so let me call this uh, I'm going to call this P T minus one. Okay, so this would be my co-state, the new co-state vector, uh, which is the gradient of the function times the future cost plus the gradient of the current cost with respect to the state. Okay, that's my co-state vector. And in fact, you can write down the co-state vector PT equals to gradient of XT FT times P T plus one plus gradient of XT CT. So the current cost, the gradient of the current cost with respect to the current state. Okay, so this is my co-state update equation. Okay, the second component of this p tilde t is always going to be equal to one because you have zero one in the lower half of this gradient of capital FT. So all in all, what we have is that this is the new co-state equation, the co-state update equation uh, or the adjoint equation. Okay, and your gradient of ut of j 
would be gradient of ut of f t times p t plus 1 ct okay this would be your derivative and then you can define your usual back propagation algorithm by just extending the same idea to the case with the terminal cost you just have to keep track of this derivative of the cost function as well in the co-state equation and in the derivative of the cost function <clears throat> Okay, so you initialize with some arbitrary initial set of actions. You run the forward propagation to come up with the trajectory. You run the backward propagation to, uh, for the adjoint equation and arrive at the co-state vectors. And then you use the co-state vector to compute the gradient and run the gradient descent step. Okay, this might feel a little rust because we have a lot of different equations and derivatives, but you can um, think about it and convince yourself that this is what we actually get for this problem. Okay, any questions so far? This would be P capital T. Okay, so I think uh, this is what I had for the open loop solution. Uh, so this is how you compute the optimal open loop solution. So you want to, of course, run gradient descent algorithm as we have always done in this class and in order to run gradient descent algorithm you need to know the derivative of the cost function or the performance function performance index uh, in order to compute the derivative it it we we saw that there is some sort of recursive equation that's appearing and we went through the entire math in today's class and we came up with the so-called back propagation algorithm now with the back propagation algorithm, we can actually readily compute what the derivative of the cost function looks like, and then we can run the gradient descent step and uh, uh, do the forward propagation, backward propagation, gradient descent step, and so on and so forth. And that's how we compute the optimal open loop solution. So this back propagation algorithm So this takes as input your initial state. And after you run several iterations of backpropagation algorithm, you get U0 star all the way up to UT minus one star, which is stationary. Okay, so it's important to remember that this is a stationary solution, which means that the gradient of J at u star is equal to zero, but it may or may not satisfy the second order sufficient condition for optimality. So again, if you want to certify that this set of actions is indeed truly optimal action, you need to ascertain the sufficient conditions for optimality, which is the second derivative condition. Well, I, I don't want to write anything about sufficient condition. I, I, I'm sure all of you know what the sufficient condition is, but you want to, so if, if you want to certify that this is an optimal solution, you have to show that the second derivative of J is positive definite at U star. If you cannot show that, then you just have to be happy with the first order necessary condition only and hope that this, uh, the system behaves as, uh, as a, you intend it to behave like with this sort of sequence of actions. So that ends the lecture today. In the next class, we are going to talk about the maximum principle, which is uh, uh, which gives you the necessary conditions for optimality for this class of problem, but where you may have uh, set uh, uh, 
constraint on the set of actions you can take. So we'll talk about maximum principle without proof, and then we will talk about dynamic programming in the next class. Okay. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm going to stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Oh, Professor, I have a question. Yes. Uh, so when you talk about this terminal cost, do yes. we, and then back propagation means that we are computing backwards. So how do we know this terminal cost again? So terminal mm -hmm. cost is something that you typically know uh, because that's your performance index. So when you define your state update equation, so this is the state update equation. This is the performance index. So, okay. so you have to know the state transition function as well as the performance index in order for you to run back propagation algorithm. Okay, so we define it already. Yeah. Okay. So for instance, let's say you want to go from Earth to some point in the moon, then your performance, your CT would be, uh, your CT would be whatever position you want to be on the moon minus yeah. current position wherever you actually landed on the moon square or, or whatever you can make it power four or something like that. Mm, yeah. Whatever you want. Right. So that's your performance index and you want to get as close to that point as possible. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. And then in fact, uh, in, fact uh, in the Apollo mission, this idea was actually used to get to the moon. So. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and then I checked, the course details materials. Um, yes. You had suggested the Bertsekas book for the static part, like starting from this section. Do you recommend any text? So this, uh, whatever I'm teaching about the backpropagation algorithm is currently from the Bertsekas book on nonlinear programming. Yeah. Uh, you will see that there is a section on discrete time optimal control problems, uh, okay. which is what we are currently covering right now. But for okay. dynamic programming and uh, and the subsequent lectures, uh, Bertsekas has of course other books on dynamic programming and optimal control. Like that's the title of the book, which covers dynamic programming in great detail. But okay. those are on stochastic uh, control problems, so not necessarily on deterministic control. So you will probably have to rely on the lecture and perhaps some lecture notes that you can find online for description of the dynamic programming algorithm. Yeah. Okay. Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Professor, do you have, have a class on Wednesday? Oh, oh, uh, I'm, is this a break on Wednesday? Sorry. I think Wednesday is a holiday. So probably I won't have a class on Wednesday. Yes. Wednesday is uh, veterans day. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll send out an announcement. So there is no class on Wednesday. So I'll see you guys on Friday then. Any other question? All right, then I'll see you guys on Friday. <laughs>